to our Chancellor, to our Deputy Vice-Chancellor, to members of the UWA Senate, to family and friends of graduates here this morning, and most importantly, to our graduates. Thank you for the introduction, and thank you for the great privilege to be here with you today. Graduates, I wanted to open today with a quote, as is common for these speeches. My opening quote comes from renowned author and philosopher, Dr. Zeus. Congratulations, today is your day. You're off to great places, you're off and away. What a great privilege it is to be given an opportunity to attend, to witness, and to address you on an occasion such as this. An occasion which acknowledges and celebrates your hard work and achievements. An occasion which celebrates the work you have done along the journey which brought you here today. This is an event which is alive with anticipation amongst your friends and family who are here to support you. Anticipation for what you will do with the skills and knowledge that you have acquired here at this university. We are all eager to see how you will apply these and use them to shape the world of tomorrow, not only for yourselves, but even more so how you may use them to influence others and to influence our society as a whole. So as you leave this place and write your future, remember that you are now part of the University of Western Australia alumni family. And my first piece of advice is to walk out the next stage of your life with the expectation that you may sometime soon perhaps find yourself where I am right now. Back at this university, reflecting on your progress so far and trying to distill from your experiences, good and bad, some jewels of wisdom to perhaps help the next generation of graduates get where they want to go faster. Ultimately, how successful you'll be on the road ahead depends on the decisions that you make in the weeks, months and years ahead. As someone who has been a professional decision maker for nearly 15 years, I wanted to share with you some of my own approach to decision making. I call it my Duna test, and it comes in two parts. Part one is long-term decision making. It involves choosing the path that you will take for the years to come. These are the decisions that many of you have before you right now. The best way I can illustrate what I call my Duna principle is to ask you to imagine you're tucked into your bed before 5am on a cold winter's morning. Is what you have to do for the day ahead motivation enough for you to spring out from under your Duna and eagerly tackle the tasks before you? If it isn't, then I encourage you to find something that is. Even if it means changing career paths, which, by the way, is why I'm a politician right now and not an architect. Most people would perhaps go the other way, but the fact that we are all so different is what makes life interesting. Part two is shorter term decision making, often on a day to day basis. These are the decisions where, in the moment, you have a chance to choose to be kind or to be unkind, to be ethical or perhaps to smudge the line a little bit. When faced with these daily decisions, ask yourself, tonight, when I'm snuggled back under that doona, will I be able to sleep soundly? Or will my decision play on my mind and keep me up? Let me be very clear on part two. Often in the moment, the wrong decision is actually the easy one to make. And the decision which will give you many years of good night's sleep can be the hardest to make of all. And as our Deputy Vice-Chancellor has just said, the right decision will often take courage. Reflecting on my own journey since graduating UWA, I was fortunate to discover early on what got me up before 5am on a cold winter's morning. This enabled me to progress on my chosen career path faster and further than most. Within 18 months of graduation from my undergraduate degree, I found myself elected to State Parliament. Then, within 12 months of graduating from my master's degree, I was appointed to state cabinet. Many people, myself included, thought that my life and career were probably largely mapped out for me from that point. So, came as quite a shock when in 2017, I was essentially fired for the first time in my life, publicly, 
on national television live. I sincerely hope that none of you get to experience that particular feeling. But do I regret the experience? Absolutely not. I learnt more about life, about myself, about other people, and about what really matters through that one experience than I had through my previous four years as a Cabinet Minister. Will you experience failure and setback on the road ahead? I actually hope so. Because if you don't, it will mean you did not push the boundaries of what is achievable in your own life or strive to make a difference doing something worthwhile. So today I encourage you to go hard and to risk failure and risk it early. I assure you that nobody who's here today wishes that upon you, but the unfortunate truth is that all those who achieve in life experience significant setbacks at some point. I also discovered early on that the further I was prepared to step outside of my comfort zone, the greater the level of success. Running for public office again, six months after a crushing public defeat, is pretty far out of most people's comfort zone, but well worth the effort in this case. For many of you, your studies here have taken you already well outside of your comfort zone, and look what you've already achieved. I encourage you to make stepping out of your comfort zone the habit of a lifetime. Whilst today is an acknowledgement of your successful completion of your studies, if any of you think you're done with that part of your life, I have one more bit of news for you. I suspect your learning journey has not actually yet ended. In fact, if becoming the best you can be is what you seek, your learning journey will probably never end. And I don't offer that up as just a bit of gratuitous advice. If some of you return as soon as next year for further postgraduate studies, you may even see me around campus, as I too have enrolled in the Faculty of Arts, Business, Law and Education for 2020 to continue my own learning journey. So, quick bit of gratuitous advice, please be kind and patient with the mature age students. Hopefully, when I'm back here as a graduate again in a few years' time, I'll have the privilege of hearing from one of you on what you've experienced and learnt over the intervening years. I'll leave you this morning as I began with the closing line from a book I genuinely recommend every graduate read. It's called Oh, The Places You'll Go by Dr. Zeus. And will you succeed? Yes, you will indeed. 98 and three quarter percent guaranteed. So be your name Borksum or Bixby or Bray or Mordecai Ali Van Allen O'Shea, you're off to great places. Today is your day. Your mountain is waiting. So get on your way. Thank you.